Today we will be looking at 5 different Mesa builds throughout all of the game. The information in this video will guide you throughout your entire journey from simply progressing the story to beating all of the in-game content. And you won't ever need another Mesa video in your life. This series is the first of its kind from my channel and I want to clarify a little bit before you start watching. It is a build tutorial, it is not a beginner tutorial on Mesa and core game mechanics. In order to fully understand this video, you should have progressed the game a little bit and have a little bit of knowledge regarding basic game mechanics. At level 1, for both Mesa and Regulators, we just want to prioritize getting core stats and we just use the best mods that we have. For Mesa specifically, there would be any form of duration and efficiency in order to maintain her buffs and ultimate. Strength should be considered a secondary priority because we only need Intensify to max out her damage reduction and we can get most of our damage from modding the Regulators themselves. Regardless of level, for regulators we always want to build raw damage, which means we want the highest amount of elemental damage, normal damage, crit and crit damage. At level 1 I also want to cover the most common pitfall from Mesa builds, which is that people vastly underestimate how fire rate impacts overall DPS. In this example I've added auger pack to our regulators for another 90% damage. This is something that seems logical at first, but the fire rate of the regulators is already very high, so adding a mod like Vile Acceleration instead will vastly improve your overall DPS. With this level 1 build you can clear the entire star chart, you can do sorties, you could even do some minor entry level steel path, but I would strongly recommend that you play in a group because you will not be able to effectively clear a lot of the stuff solo. The level 2 Mesa is essentially the same as the level 1 Mesa, the only difference really is that we are applying stronger versions of mods if we have them available. At this point we can either add in or swap in mods such as Adaptation or Rolling Guard to improve our survivability and harder content. We can also start further prioritizing a stat that we want. In this example I added Narrow Minded to further increase the buff duration, however I will now sacrifice some Disarm Radius on my 2 ability. A level 2 Mesa will be able to do anything that the level 1 Mesa can do, but a bit more effectively. If you have it unlocked, you should also be able to contribute in an Arcan Hunt in a group setting. At level 3, we want to have all of the strongest mods for both Mesa and our regulators. The main difference for level 3 is that we want to actually start building for a purpose, which means that we now start prioritizing certain things over other things in order to achieve our goal. For specifically Mesa, there isn't all that much you can do except try to maximize all of her regulator uptime. So, with that in mind, we might start using a mod like Energy Nexus or Equilibrium together with a Sentinel in order to maximize our mana efficiency so that we can keep our ultimate up at all times. Level 3 Mesa can already basically do any content in the game relatively effectively. Steel Path, Archon Hunts, Zaraman, Sanctum, all of that should be doable. And you can see here that the level 3 Mesa can already beam my Acolyte pretty well. Getting into level 4 and level 5, let me warn you straight away that this is going to be insanely resource heavy, especially once you get to level 5. I recommend only attempting these builds if you really do like the frame and you want to maximize it. Or if you have a specific purpose in mind for which you need a very specific build that is min-maxed in one direction. Anything shown from this point on in the video is not really necessary for day-to-day -day Warframe content. That said, the gameplay footage that you're seeing right now is actually from my level 5 build, and that is because level 4 and level 5 are very much intertwined. The reason for that is that at level 4 we start using Helmith, which introduces a lot of variability to our Warframe builds. Helmith allows us to outsource a certain trait of our build in order to maximize another. In this case, I've chosen Nourish to outsource my mana regeneration, which will allow me to slot in more damage. On top of outsourcing things to Helmith, we will also add in things from our entire loadout in order to further improve our level 4 build. In my case, I'm using a specific aura called Combat Discipline in order to permanently trigger Arcane Avenger and add permanent crit to my weapons. And I'm also using Secondary Outburst together with a Ceramic Dagger and a Riven in order to increase my combo multiplier, which gives me crit and crit damage to my regulators. And finally, I'm using Tenacious Bond and Reinforce Bond in order to further maximize the damage that my build can do. A level 4 build will be able to shred basically any content in the game. For Mesa, that means anything that is targetable by her ult will die. There are some other noteworthy choices, for example Pillage is a good one, if you need to strip enemies that specifically are very hard to kill with armor. 
Right, so for level 5 I kind of wanted to do a bit more improvised and that's because this is very much an open project I have not done. I still have a lot of testing to do, a lot of different things I want to do. And I kind of want to give you that sentiment as well that once you get into min-maxing, you're really only going to get so many things to do at once just because of the insane amount of resources that you need to move around. That said, what is the difference between a level 4 Mesa and a level 5 Mesa? For my specific level 4 and level 5, the difference is that I'm outsourcing my crit chance to my Orcan shards. I'm still missing a Tau Forge here, the proper one is 2 Taus and 3 non Taus. Just quickly going over the build here, it's almost the same. I'm actually using Alibrium here, but I've read your comments in the last couple videos. Energy Nexus together with Nourish can be really good depending on the mission type. However, for Endless, which is mostly what I used the specific build for, I'm gonna stick with Equilibrium. I also mentioned the Ceramic Dagger, for which I simply used two initial combo mods. I did have a Riven that gave me initial combo as well. However, I got an even better roll that I want to sell for Plat, so I will have to get another one. It's important to know that if you get a ceramic ribbon that has at least 34 initial combo, you will be able to have a permanent 11 times combo. Getting on the regulators, this is the exact same build that you saw in the footage before. I'm using a faction mod here and that is why I'm outsourcing my crit in the first place. I strongly believe that using a faction mod, especially a prime faction mod, is going to be more damage than just making it partially red crit. I cannot test this yet because like I said I'm missing an orange Tau and I'm also not currently owning a Riven that gives me the initial combo back. But I believe that this is the case and I will have to do some more testing. And this basically concludes the video. If you stick around this long, thank you for watching. I want to have some closing thoughts on this. The series is a first attempt at making like a proper throughout the game type of build series and it's going to be experimental for quite some time. For that reason, I would very much appreciate if you leave some actual good constructive feedback in the comments or tell me where I can improve what's good, what's bad and all that kind of stuff. And with that, thank you for watching and see you next time.